for a Singapore-built drone that can fly into narrow spaces under rail viaducts to carry out checks. BINO, short for Bearing Inspector for Narrow Space Observation, was developed by a team from the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Bino is in the studio with us this evening, together with the lead developer, that's Associate Professor Fung Shaohui. Oh, thanks for coming, Professor Shong. Fung. Uh, now, you've brought Bino in with you, uh, version 2. Uh, we just summed it up. It can, it can fly into narrow spaces to check rail viaducts. Now, you mentioned before, it's not just taking pictures, it is also able to measure. Does that sum up the, 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 the total of Bino's capabilities? Yes, uh, thank you for having me. So uh, for MRT, there are actually uh, viaducts which the MRT tracks uh, run about uh, to make sure that the viaduct does not buckle during thermal expansion when there's heat, we need to inspect it. And the inspection is not just taking pictures, there's actually a measurement to it. Someone needs to go up there and use a ruler to measure how much has deformed. Uh, so that's quite dangerous because you need someone to go up. It's a, it's a big risk of falling. So what Bino has, is, uh, allows us to do is allows us to bypass the human part the drone can fly up, uh, go into the cavity because the bearing is actually placed into a recess area, difficult to access. But the drone can enter it, it lands there, and then it actually has a very unique payload. It's a ca single camera <coughs> system which moves left and right mm. in well outside the drone, taking many high-quality pictures. And once it does all the pictures, it converts it into a 3D model for measurements. All this is done automatic, and you don't actually need to do any human measurements. Right. It sounds like quite a complex process, uh, but it's obviously, uh, you've, you've, you've drilled it down well for us. Uh, Prof Fung, tell us more about those bearings that you mentioned. Where exactly, uh, you know, are they? Yeah. And, and how, what's the process like for Bino to actually inspect them? Great. Yeah, so uh, actually this is something that we all take for granted. We see it every day. If you've taken on the MRT tracks, you see the small little holes. Those are not holes for nothing. They're actually holes for where the bearings are. Uh, so there are actually well over 15,000 bearings in Singapore alone. Uh, and all of this requires to be checked. And they are normally at a very difficult location, above roads, above uh, tracks, above uh, other water bodies. So it's very difficult to access it. So what Bino allows you to do is you can just fly up there and you can see it's shaped like a bumper car. Mm. You do not need to be the best pilot in the world. You can bump your way in as long as you reach into it. Uh, you don't have to fly, it lands inside it and it can actually take over and do all the measurements by itself. But why do they have to be checked so frequently? Yeah, so just like, uh, so our MRT system is over 35 years old. Uh, as we get older, we need to go for health checks, uh, check your cholesterol level, check your glucose level. So just as that, every building that gets older needs to be checked. And many of these bearings after 20, 30 years may need to re get replacement. And this inspection is required to actually determine when or and where they should be uh, removed and replaced. Right. Very okay, important. I don't know if we can actually see this or you can actually show us, but you say, okay, it takes pictures and then it measures. I see some little fans there and I don't know, that looks like a camera at the front, but I could be wrong. How does this thing actually take pictures and then how does it measure? What does it measure using what part of that machine? Great. So in front, indeed, is the camera. Uh, so to, to get measurements, you actually need to know the 3D location. So like us, we actually have two pair of eyes and that gives us uh, some depth perception. We know how far something is from us. So to get the same amount of uh, information for us, we, uh, for the drone, we actually need to move the drone at different locations. Sort of your eyes are at two different locations. What, it, what this system does, it allows us to move the camera to multiple, infinite locations actually. And by taking multiple images at different locations, we can combine all the images together and we can actually create a 3D model. That's actually how we perceive that. We have two eyes. Uh, if we only had one eye, we wouldn't be able to do it. So we sort of I made it such a pseudo depth system that allows us to actually recover the depth information. And this is actually really like recovering a 3D model uh, from 2D images. Yeah. It sounds like this is going to, or it has been reducing the amount of time, right? Drastically. Uh, for how, how well or how efficient it is to check all these bearings. How were we doing it before? You mentioned earlier that it, it, it was done by people, yes. but you know, there's so many bearings, so it must have taken like forever. Exactly. So uh, I think inspecting a bearing is not the longest period of time. It's you but have so to bring many of them. So many of them, that's one. But uh, for you to inspect it, you need to probably get a crane, scaffolding. Yeah. Those take longer to do, to right. deploy. And once you wait for it to come, you have to take time to go up. Uh, you, all this machinery takes fuel, takes a lot of energy, uh, but we can do it with a fraction of the time and also the fraction of the energy. 
So in the long term, you actually will save costs. Yeah. Also, this is version two. You were mentioning earlier version one. That was the hard thing to come up with. And I can kind of see why, because it's a composite picture making 3D out yes. of multiple 2D images. So getting there was hard, improving on that not so hard, but moving on from what you have right now, when conceptually you are already there, what more can you do with this kind of basic model? Yeah, so I think the reason why it took difficult for the first version is this drone is really uh, not a normal drone. For one thing, it's actually there's no battery on board. Imagine your phone without a battery. Uh, it's actually powered from a cable uh, that's on the ground. And the reason is, uh, it's a two folds. One is we want to make the drone as light as possible. Uh, mm. And for a drone, the heaviest part is the, the battery. Uh, if you are able to remove the battery, we can make it shrink it as small as possible. Uh, the, t the, the, cable, the power cable also makes it very safe. Uh, I can guarantee that the drone will not be able to exit a certain height. So that means this drone will not be able to reach into the MRT tracks and cause any accidents. So that's the okay. interesting part of this. Okay. Uh, but it all fuels the fact I need it small. Because yeah. I need it to go in. Is there a version 3 in the pipeline? Possibly. So this one has been designed for viaduct uh, bearing inspection. But in Singapore, they are more than just rail. There's a pedestrian uh, bridges, there are vehicular viaducts. All of these buildings uh, and structures have the bearings. So, but all of them are slightly different. They have different requirements, different designs. So there are some modifications required to yeah. get there. So I think that will what V3 would do. All right, thanks for all that. Bringing Bino in to show us what it can do. Associate Professor Fung Shaohui here from SUTD. Thank you.